Welcome adventurers. Today I'm going to turn this stuff, well, into city streets. This is totally sponsored by Wolvencraft, even though he's not really aware of it because I'm totally ripping off his idea. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make tiles that would interlock, even though there's bits of other projects floating around. I spent hours and hours trying to figure out how to make roads that would look interesting and interconnect. You can see the lines I've drawn, the tape I've used, and ultimately I figured out that these just aren't that dynamic, they're not that interesting, and it doesn't lend itself to creating a dynamic environment. So I fiddled and messed around with it until I found this plan. These diagonal lines uh, going from corner to corner, bisecting from one corner to the middle, and then of course cutting off the adjacent corner opposite those, and I can create a nearly infinite variety of shapes, from squares to long rectangles to extended city blocks, even these angular cornered blocks. I found that this was the most useful design. I probably spent way too many hours doing this because, well, math isn't my strong suit. I did okay in geometry in high school, but I transitioned that to these. These are two foot by two foot painters canvases that are made out of wood and four inch wide cork board uh, to scale that would probably be basically a 10 foot wide lane on a road but I glued them down and then I 3d printed some sewer grates and some manhole covers I know it's not very exciting it's just a little box with some sticks in it and a circle kind of looks like an Oreo don't eat them because it is plastic and it would probably mess up your teeth and God only knows what to your digestive system I uh, broke down and bought myself some Proxon guides from Shifting Lands so that way I could have some more accurate cuts when I'm working with foam. I used some half inch XPS foam that I cut down to quarter inch thickness and then I took those half inch by quarters and cut those down into more well quarter inch thicknesses so that I could make what would be the equivalent of like 10 foot long curbs for my roadways. So there you go, quarter inch by quarter inch. And I made a ton of those, as you see here. Now, for those of you who aren't subscribed, which is the vast majority of you, it is free, just in case you were wondering. And now's your perfect opportunity to do so. It doesn't cost you anything. Like, share, subscribe. Of course, if you'd like to do more, uh, Patreon is also an option. Then I made these one inch by one inch, so they'd be roughly five foot by five foot sidewalk tiles, utilizing the same method. And then again with the Proxon guide, I cut down roughly eighth inch, you know, three mil pieces of XPS foam to create broken concrete slabs. Because if you don't have a building in the slot, it needs to have something to make it interesting. And if you do have a building there, it covers it up. It's pretty simple. Eileen's Tacky Glue is the glue I used basically through the whole build to glue everything in place except for the little plastic pieces I use super glue there. And this is kind of what it turned into. It doesn't look like much now, but there's roadways, there's basic rubble debris that's all the same height across, so that way when I put buildings there, they'll have an even footing. But there you go, that's the basic premise. Now this could be easily adapted to fantasy, instead of using cork and whatnot, you can, you know, make muddy roadways uh, utilizing a method I'm going to describe here, which is Plaster Paris, Mod Podge, a little paint, then some water, kind of mix it all up and make a sludge. It's basically what Boilai uses on a lot of his stuff. So I guess he's also inadvertently guest starring in this episode. Kind of spread it out. I use a sponge and paintbrush to get rid of any kind of well, putty knife ripples that will ultimately be in there. 
I want to make sure that it looks like dirt and not like I spread it out with a putty knife. Then I made my tried and true basing sludge, which is similar, but add a little sand. It makes it gritty, gives it some nice texture, and I don't put that everywhere. I kind of put raised areas as, to create an unevenness to the soil. And now I texture the foam. Some cracks here and there, pull apart some pieces with tweezers, my fingers, an exacto knife to create damage, and of course accentu accentuate the crevices in the XPS foam. Uh, pen and knife work really well in the cork board too, uh, to chip away at it and make cracks and potholes. And of course, aluminum foil glued to the end of an old paintbrush stick that fell apart. Cover everything in Mod Podge and black paint, mainly to protect the surface. It doesn't do much other than that. Now a little elephant gray for the sidewalks and curbs. A little pewter gray for the old slabs of concrete that fill the negative space. I went with this nutmeg brown initially, and I didn't like the color of it. So, I went with a burnt sienna and covered everything with that because it gave it a more natural, muddy, kind of clay look. And of course, uh, a little pavement color for the asphalt, which is what the corkboard is. Black for the manhole covers and the sewer grates, the storm grates. Uh, black wash over everything to dull it down and bring it all together, just like that. And then a bit of dry brushing of this golden brown that I've come to like uh, over the dirt area specifically. Helps bring out the high points. And of course the country gray comes in to accentuate all the concrete. Now, if it gets a little heavy, take it off. If it's not, leave it fine. I attempted to make a stencil out of what was ultimately too thin a cardboard as the paint impacted it it caused it to expand and well warp which did not give me the best results as you see there it's it's all warped not happy so get rid of that and you'll see here it kind of gets blotchy and well ugly it doesn't look great but I'm not repainting that instead the other five pieces I made I stencil out with tape and it gave me crisper lines, much crisper lines. Now, I got some cheap, cheap masking tape for model painting on Amazon a long time ago, and I laid it out just like that. Uh, I didn't make my intersections go all the way through because I didn't want to. And then to finish it off, I'm going to dust the edges here with black. Call it good, as well, Boyle, I would say. I want to give a special thanks to my patrons, HM Girl Potpourri and Ryer Tonic, my newest patron, and of course my legendary character here, LAJ. Now I am very proud of this build because the roadways look great, the negative spaces in between where buildings or dead space can go are awesome. You can create two by four foot sections, two by six foot sections, and just by a quarter turn of each panel create a nearly infinite number of variabilities there. That's a four by four foot. This is a four by six foot. Another four by six, and I only turned one tile to make the roadway different. And again, another four by six by only turning one tile to make it different. And again, you may guess what I want to say. And 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 one more time there. You know, basically, you can change the entire map by turning one tile and each time make a completely different map. It's pretty awesome. I tried to get some dynamic shots here at an angle so you can see how everything interacts. There are moments when I'm looking at this and the lines in between the panels actually kind of evaporate to me. It's, it's pretty awesome. I am very happy about this and I, I hope you are too. Uh, my next few builds will definitely be to be filling out all this negative space where the, well, ruins are. Maybe a fortress in that big square right there that your kill team is trying to take over. Thank you for watching. Now go have an adventure in crafting.